In the early 1970s, Nike was still struggling to find a voice in a then rising basketball shoe market. The brand was less than a decade old. Carolyn Davidson, a graphic design student, was paid $35 to design the famous swoosh logo, and the company had just switched their name from Blue Ribbon Sports to Nike. In 1973, just two years after the name change, Nike took the famous swoosh logo and threw it on a plain white shoe, creating a sneaker that was so simple in design, you couldn't miss the iconic logo, the Nike Blazer. A sneaker that has stood the test of time despite technological advancements in modern footwear. In this video, we're going to be combing Nike's history to try and understand how this 46 year old shoe is still relevant today. But hey, if this is your first time tuning into this channel, my name is Brian. My brother Nacho and I make videos on sneaker history and all things related to sneaker culture. So if you're into that kind of thing, please consider subscribing. Let's get into the video. This is a plimsoll. This is one of the earliest examples of a rubber soled athletic shoe. You see, before the 1960s and 70s, not much thought beyond this was given to a sneaker design for athletics. While Converse did mix things up with the all-star Chuck Taylors in 1917, it wouldn't be until much, much later that real thought would be given to a shoe designed specifically for athletes. So when the Nike Blazer released in 1973, the shoe featured a leather upper, a mesh nylon tongue, and a textured vulcanized rubber sole, the preferred sole for basketball sneakers in the early 1970s. In fact, at the time, each of these elements were the best technologies available for shoes on the court. It was the cutting edge technology at the time. Even after the debut of the Blazer, it would still be five years before Nike first injected air into its soles with the Nike Tailwind, and 12 years before they signed Michael Jordan to be the frontman of its basketball business. Nike as we know it today did not exist, but the Blazer is an icon from that era. When deciding on a suitable name for the silhouette, Bill Bowerman and Phil Knight took inspiration from the local basketball team, the Portland Blazers. But Nike looked to Texas San Antonio for brand awareness. It was George the Iceman Gervin of the San Antonio Spurs who would be the first basketball player to endorse the shoe. Here's what Gervin had to say about his relationship with Nike back then. Nike was very innovative. Nike was thinking out of the box back in the 70s. When I first joined the NBA, I used to wear Adidas and then Nike came on board and Nike approached me and wanted to give me much more money and they had a better quality shoe. Sponsoring George Gervin was a well thought out strategic move. Nike was entering a new sector in the sportswear market. They had to compete with Adidas and Converse so it's no wonder that they placed a giant swoosh on the side of the shoe to build brand awareness. As for George the Iceman Gervin, he was one of the most notorious players in the league, was a nickname for his cool attitude on the court and an incredible track record as a shooting guard. The cameras were pointed at Gervin every game and whenever those cameras caught his feet they found huge Nike swooshes. Every photograph was like an advertisement and Nike was slowly but surely building a reputation in the basketball world. Let's talk about player exclusives also commonly referred to by sneakerheads as PEs. Player exclusives are one-off colorways or renditions of a shoe created for basketball players by the brands they are sponsored by. They are frequently used to build hype around limited releases, test colorways, or simply a public expression of the brand's commitment to their player. As George Gervin began to make a name for himself as a legend on the court, Nike naturally wanted to celebrate his nickname, the Iceman, fitting Gervin with a unique blazer model. This special blazer model had Iceman across the heel where the word Nike usually sat. You see, back in the 1970s, player exclusives were so rare that the Gervin Blazer PEs may have very well been the first PE sneaker ever made. Unfortunately, the Iceman PEs were never released to the public, but it serves as a symbol of how forward-thinking Nike was. About five years after the Blazer was introduced, Nike put all its efforts into developing their Nike Air technology program. It wouldn't be long before heavy leathers, fragile meshes, and hard vulcanized rubber soles got left in the past. In just a few short years, the Blazer was far from the best of what Nike had to offer. And unfortunately, the sneaker fell out of favor with basketball players. By the time the 1990s rolled around, the Nike Blazer was officially extinct on the basketball court. But the Nike Blazer sole that was once designed for traction on hardwood basketball courts was quickly adopted by skateboarders. Skaters chose the Nike Blazer because the shoe's sole had amazing traction on their skateboard's grip tape. And not to mention, the heavy leather and suede uppers were strong enough to withstand the constant wear and tear from kickflips and ollies. As basketball players left the Nike Blazer behind, skaters took ownership of the sneaker and it found a second life that would ultimately save the silhouette from ever going out of style. In 2003, street artist Futura2000 used the opportunity of a Nike collaboration to do something unique with the budget sneaker. 
The collab featured a blend of olive, tan, and navy suede, and they only released 1,000 pairs, making them immediately rare and collectible. While yes, sure, there was hype around the release, it didn't bring crazy awareness to the shoe. That would happen next. It wasn't until 2005 when the legendary pro skater Lance Mountain announced the development of the Blazer for Nike SB. Finally adding padding to the tongue and bringing Nike Air technology into the sneaker for the first time. These minor tweaks officially transformed the shoe from being a basketball shoe to a skate shoe. And one of the best skate shoes on the market still to this day. In 2006, the Nike Blazer got a massive boost when the iconic skate brand Supreme collaborated with Nike on a trio of blazers. This elevated the classic silhouette to one of the most sought after sneakers in the world. Supreme released three wilted blazers with Nike in black, white, and red. Each colorway featured a fake snakeskin swoosh and Gucci inspired ribbons up the heels that held golden D rings. To this day, the 2006 Supreme Blazers are considered by many to be the high watermark for brand collaborations and one of the best Nike collaborations Supreme has ever made. Brand new pairs are rare to come by and even used pairs fetch four figure prices. If you go on StockX right now, you can find them going for thousands of dollars. In recent years, the Blazer has been a canvas for artists and designers like Hiroshi Fujiwara and Off-White founder Virgil Abloh. The Off-White collab catapulted the Nike Blazer straight into the world of high fashion. Virgil Abloh put several spins on the silhouette, including a custom-made version made for famous tennis player Serena Williams and a recent 2018 October spooky collection of Off-White Blazers. I think these are pretty dope. What do you think? Leave a comment below. For over 40 years, the Nike Blazer has remained relevant through the evolution of our society. Over the years, its image and utility has been loved by skaters, basketball players, and high-end fashion people. At one point, it seemed like the Nike Blazer would be extinct, but thanks to its simplicity and perfectly executed marketing plan by Nike, the Nike Blazer continues to permeate our culture. Guys, real quick before we go, what sneaker do you want to see us do next? Drop it in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, like, and more importantly, share this video if you enjoyed it. It would really help out the channel. Anyways guys, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Have a great day. Peace.